Welcome to the Caltex Theatre, a full hour of dramatic entertainment broadcast over a nationwide network of stations throughout Australia. The Caltex Theatre is brought to you by Caltex Oil, marketers of over a thousand outstanding petroleum products, in association with Caltex dealers and distributors everywhere. Tonight, the Caltex Theatre presents Bad Day at Blackrock, specially adapted from the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer outstanding drama, which on the screen featured an all-star cast headed by Spencer Tracy and including Ernest Borgnine, from whom we will hear in a moment. Bad Day at Blackrock is the story of a man with a mission, a quiet gentleman who came to a small Texan town to pay a debt and found himself faced with suspicion and hostility. But Blackrock was to learn that the gentleman had also a will of iron. Starring tonight, you will hear Joe McCormack. Your producer, Cressick Jenkinson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take pleasure in introducing in person one of the stars of the MGM screen production of the play you are about to hear, the well-known Hollywood actor and Academy Award winner, Ernest Borgnine. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. I was very interested to hear that the Macquarie Network was broadcasting a radio adaptation of the MGM movie, Bad Day at Black Rock. And I'm glad that this should happen during my visit to Australia, it giving me the opportunity to hear it. Because if I had to name one screen role as my favorite, it would be the part of Coley that I played in this picture. Well, so far anyway, because I haven't included my latest role of Rue in Summer of the Seventeenth Doll, which we have just finished. It sure has been a real pleasure to make this picture here. The doll is going to be a great movie, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it just as much as we did making it. That's, of course, some time away yet. But right now, I'm sure we'll all enjoy the Macquarie broadcast of Bad Day at Black Rock, played by a strong cast of wonderful actors, to whom I'd like to say, good luck. Thank you, Ernest Borgnine. The Caltex Theatre presents Bad Day at Black Rock, Act One. Something wrong. Thank you, Conductor. Thank you, sir. Uh, you for Black Rock? That's right. Must be some mistake. I'm Hastings, the telegraph agent. And nobody told me the train was stopping. They didn't? No. I just told her they didn't, and they order. What I want to know is, why didn't they? Maybe they didn't think it was important. Important? <laughs> First time a streamliner stopped here in four years. Uh, you've been met? I mean, uh, visiting folks or something? I mean, I mean, what do you want? I want to go to a place called Dolby Flat. Are there any cabs available? Dolby Flat? Yeah. Uh, no cabs, no. Uh, is the hotel open? Is the hotel open? Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. What'd you say, Hastings? Asked for Doby Flat, did he? Okay. 
Okay, thanks for calling. What was it? Some strangers in town. Yes, mister? You want something? Good afternoon. Like a room. Um, I'm, uh... We're all filled up. Oh. Any idea where uh, I could... This sit? is 1945, mister. There's been a war on, and rooms are always hard to get when wars are around. Well, it seems I remember the war ending a couple of months ago. Yeah, okay, so it did, but uh, the OPA lingers on. Uh, you don't know about the OPA. Oh, you tell me. Well, for establishments with less than 50 rooms, hotel keepers have got to report regularly about, uh, well, about tenants and uh, uh, registration. There are penalties imposed, yeah. you see. <clears throat> hey, you can't look in that register a without a... Blank a space on these pages. That can mean only one thing. you got rooms. Uh, give me a key. All the rooms are locked up. Uh, some are showrooms for feed salesmen and cattle buyers. Uh, the, the rest, they're spoken for. Rented cowboys and ranch hands for when they come to town. Uh, they, they pay by the month. Well, take this key, I think. Room four. Is that okay with you? Well, look, I you, you can... So. Now, just to make it all nice and formal. There. I've signed your register for you. Yeah. Well, now, I'd, I'd like to have a bath. Uh, where is it? At the head of the stairs. Thank you. Oh, don't worry about my bag. I can carry it myself. Not that I suppose you were going to worry about it. Who is he, Pete? Uh, John J. McCready, Los Angeles. I want to know everything he does, Pete. Phone calls, mail. Uh-huh. And in the meantime... In the meantime, I'll crown him a little. See if he's got any iron in his blood. Hi. I guess maybe you're in the wrong room. You think so? What else you got on your mind? Oh, nothing, I guess. If you had half a mind, you'd have paid attention to what Pete downstairs said. He said this room here is for us cowboys. For our every wish and comfort. And this one is yours, I guess. Well, I'm in town. And I'm in town, as any fool can see. You can see that, can't you? Yeah, I guess so. You must have been waiting here for me for some time. I'm sorry I had to wait so long. I was enjoying my bath. Uh, would would you mind if I sort of got my things together and found another room? Oh, not at all. But if you really wanted this room, we could maybe settle your claim without all this talk. I mean, I believe a man's nothing unless he stands up for what's rightfully his. Uh, what do you think? Oh, yeah, I guess so. You guess so? But you still ain't claiming this room? No, I guess not. You're all the time guessing, aren't you, huh? Don't you know anything? Yeah, well, I know that ever since I got off the train, everybody's been needling me. Why? <laughs> I guess I rightly don't know. I guess it makes it that neither of us knows anything much. Well, I'd be moved into a new room soon. I'm sorry to have disturbed yours here. And then he just picks up the key, signs the register, and walks off up the stairs. Oh, I wish he hadn't come here, Doc. It can only mean trouble, and I don't like trouble. I say he's a cop. Do you ever see a cop with a stiff arm like he's got? Well, maybe he's just making out. I, well, I mean, maybe his arm's all right. Maybe he was just hanging on to something and tied in his pocket. Like what? A pistol, a stick of TNT, so he can blow up the whole mangy, miserable town? Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a bad arm. Bad hand, too, maybe. Just wants to keep it hidden in his pocket. Oh, well, that's probably him coming downstairs again. Uh -huh. You sell cigarettes here? Um, how long are you staying? Where? My new room? Well, I'm staying. I mean in the hotel. 24 hours. Why? Oh, uh, just uh, asking. Why? Are you going to have a convention here? I was just asking. Yeah, there's cigarettes. Huh. Want me to open the pack for you? Well, one hand's enough to do that, thanks. Okay. Hey, where would I get a car here? I, I don't know. Oh. Well, now, let's put it this way. Supposing I had a car and I wanted some gas, where would I go? You don't have a car. You might try that garage down the end of the street. Thanks. To help? Uh, I'll see what I can do down there. Uh, 
Then he signed the register, Mr. Smith, and went upstairs. And just now, a little minute or so ago, maybe, uh, just before you came in, he, he went out heading for the garage. Yeah, I saw him on the way. John J. McCready, eh? Huh? <sighs> Where's Coley? Oh, I think he's Call still... Uh... Yeah, where you oh. been? Upstairs, talking to the stranger. Been thinking about him. Yeah, he's cool. Real cool, that fella. I, I was trying to give him the push, see? Thought I should... And he doesn't push easy, eh? Huh? Well, that's it. That's just it. He pushes too easy. You know, maybe we ought to... Uh... Doc. Huh? Oh, I didn't notice you sitting there, Doc. What are you doing, trying to hide? No. No need for me to hide from anyone. I was just sitting around, sitting and wondering what all you people are worrying about. You wonder too much and talk too much, Doc. It's a bad parley. I hold an old truck with silence. I got nothing to hide. What are you trying to say? Nothing, man. It's just that you worry about this stranger only if you look at him from a certain aspect. And how do you look at him, Doc? With the innocence of a fresh laid egg? You keep it up, Doc. Make bad jokes. Be funny. Someday I'll have Coley wash your mouth out with lye soap. You, Coley, it seems to me you now started to get a little nervous about our visitor, huh? Well, I... Uh... Don't get too nervous too fast. That's what I ask of you. Well, I don't like it. I don't understand him. Why he came here... Maybe he's just passing through. His manner spells trouble. Yeah, that's what I say. We ought to see him, all of us. You should see him, boys. You should talk to the guy, find out... What'll I talk to him about? The birds, the bees, the crops, the weather? You tried talking to him. Where'd he get you? I just thought... You he... just thought. Well, what do we do then? What'll you do? You wait. Just like Pete here. That right, Pete? And that's all you'll do, Coley. And while you wait... Yeah, maybe I will talk to him. Maybe I will. Oh. Uh, yeah? Okay. Hastens again. He said he just saw McCready going into the jail. What do you suppose he'd want to talk to the sheriff about? Locked up in my own jail. Oh, uh, sorry, I thought you were a guest. You're lying there asleep in the cell bed and the door was open. Well, I thought you were the no. guest. No, as it so happens, I'm the host. Hey, uh, you want a snow? No, thanks. I don't blame you. It's awful. What are you looking at? You. Oh, I ain't always this bad. Yeah, it was just the last night me and my pal, Doc Veely, we, uh, <laughs> we did a little celebrating. What were you celebrating? Uh, you name it, mister. That's what we were celebrating. <laughs> Anyhow, while well, you won. Uh, my name is McCready. I came in on the streamliner. You what? Yeah, I know. It's the first time I stopped here in four years. Well, what I want is a little information. I have to go to a place called Adobe Flat. This ain't no information bureau. You know, there's one thing about Black Rock. Everybody's so polite. Makes for a very gracious living. Mm. Well, nobody asks you here. How do you know? Well, what about Doberflan? I'm looking for a man called Camaco. What? what? Almost a disaster. Then you need to smash your bottle. Yeah. Stayed worse than dead. You move fast for a, cri uh, for a big man. How about Camaco? Well, how about him? Now, if there are no further questions, friend, I'll be getting back to my drinking. You excuse me? Okay. Hope you don't mind letting yourself out. No, I don't. Mr. McCready. Well, you know, those are the first pleasant words I've heard since I got here. Well, my name is Smith. I own the Three Bar Ranch. I, uh... I won't apologize for some of the people in town. They act like they're sitting on a keg. A keg? Of what? I don't know. It's a little 
Diamonds, gunpowder. Oh, it's nothing like that. We're suspicious of strangers, that's all. A hangover from the old days, the old West. Oh, you know, I thought the tradition of the old West was hospitality. Well, I'm trying to be hospitable, Mr. McCready. You going to be around long? It could be. Uh Uh-huh. Well, how'd you like to go hunting tomorrow? I'd be proud to have you as my guest. Oh, no, thanks. I'm afraid I can't. Ah. Because of your arm, I suppose. I knew a man lost his arm once in a threshing accident. He used to hunt all the time. He was quite a man. He... uh... Oh, sorry, I mean, if I... uh... Well, if there's anything I can do while you're around... No, I don't think so, thanks. I was just looking for a... But no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Looking for what, Mr. McCready? Well, I was looking for a man named Kamako. Kamako, huh? Yeah, that's him. Sure, I remember him. Japanese farmer. Yeah, yeah. yeah he never had a chance. Huh? Well, he got here in 41 just before Pearl Harbor, and three months later they shipped him off to a relocation center. Hmm. Tough. You don't happen to remember which one they sent him to, do you? Who knows? Why don't you try writing it? Oh, no, I've already written them. They don't forward my letters. I keep sending them back. They do, huh? Yeah, they do. Who's this? Hmm? Is it a girl in the jeep? Oh, that's Liz Worth, sister of the young fellow behind the reception counter at the hotel. Oh, she's pretty. Yeah, Liz is a pretty girl. Hi. You need any help with that can? I can manage. Well, I need a little help. I'd like to rent your Jeep. Well, that'll be $2 an hour, gas extra, $10 for my time. Why don't you ask him where he wants to go, Liz? Well, where do you want to go? Adobe Flat. Is the road well marked? Uh, yeah, about six, seven miles down. Oh, it's fine. I won't need your time. I uh, thought you might need a little help. No, no, no. I'll get along fine, thank you. Here's the money. Liz, do you have a license to hire cars? I, uh, well, you might get into trouble giving him the jeep without a license to hire him. I won't say a word to the sheriff. Uh, when can I take it now? Uh, uh, yeah, Good. I suppose... Yeah, you've hired it, mister. You take it whenever you want. Fine, thanks. I won't be very long. I'll drop it back here when I'm finished. The garage. Well, you have the garage? Yeah, I was down there a while ago. I couldn't find anybody around. Hey, well, I'll get it back there safe and sound later on. I'll see you, friend. shouldn't have done that, Liz. You shouldn't have let him have it. I thought it'd be better if he went out there and got done with it. What can he find out? I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. We know you know that. Liz, this is liable to be the hardest ten dollars you've ever earned in your life. Tim. Master Smith. <laughs> Sorry, I was just having to lie down, a little drink. McCready, that fellow who just got into town, what did he want here with you? Uh, McCready? Oh, yeah, McCready. He asked about Camarco. Uh, hey, you think he'll kick up a storm, Mr. Smith? Storm? What about? Oh, I don't know. All I know, I, I don't want no more trouble around here. Never again. Trouble? Well, you don't know anything about Camargo, do you? No, I do not, and that's the point. Well, the point is, what you don't know won't hurt you, Tim. You got the body of a hippo, but the brain of a rabbit, and I don't overtax it. Yeah, Mr. Smith. Yeah, sure. Whatever you say. Mr. Smith? Yeah, what is it, Hastings? Uh, Mr. Smith, I uh, got a reply to that wire you had me send to Los Angeles. There you are. What does it say? Uh, Mr. Smith's friend never heard of him. That's what he says. He checked and there's no John J. McCready. No listing, no record, no information. No nothing. Well, well where does that leave us now? That's right where we were before, I reckon. Ah, oh, this McCready, I think he's a nothing. A nobody. Is he? Well, I've been thinking it all over about him. I guess maybe we did get too scared too quick. There's nothing to worry with that fella. Isn't there? Oh, you got brains, you have, Coley. Well, what can he find out? That Camargo... 
Suppose he finds out. What of it? A nobody like MacReady can raise a pretty big stink. But the point is, who'd miss a nobody like MacReady, huh? Well, if he'd just say, uh, disappeared, who, Coley? You, you mean, kill him? Well, you can't do that. He's not an animal. Well, listen to the little spitfire. You miserable little toad, I'm trying to save your neck. And if I don't, who will? Well, all I Tim was just... with a doc? Your sister with the rocks in her head? Still, there's one thing about your sister. She's got twice the guts you have. You're only fit for running away. Well, it's too late for that. You're in this as much as anyone, Pete, and you ain't running no place. Well, all I was... It... Oh, well, forget it. All right, then. So we got to do some careful thinking and planning. We got to take steps to protect ourselves from this nosy character, and I got a little plan right now that could protect us in just the way the doctor. Man, you're giving your stomach punishment with that stuff. <laughs> That's me, Doc. Always punishing my poor little thumb time. Saw Smith pay you a visit not so long ago. Yeah. Seems like the jailhouse has suddenly become a popular place. First McCready, then Smith, now me. Guess you haven't had so many visitors here in a coon's age. Mm. Yeah, Smith can find himself a new boy for sheriff. I don't mind telling you, Doc. Someone else can take it on. I can't take another day of it. If you're a sheriff, they gotta respect you. Otherwise, you can't do your job. They just laugh. Uh-huh. Well, I don't laugh, Tim. Why don't you? Oh, cut it out. <laughs> well, you should. I guess everyone should laugh at me. Tim the plaster sheriff of Black Rock. Ha-ha! <laughs> Boy, you get hold of yourself. You snap out of this. You're going to get yourself a complex or something behaving like this. Four years ago, if I'd done my job, if I'd have checked up and found out what happened, Oh, but I did. No, sir. Well, what could you have found out? They told you a story, you had to believe it. Would you believe it? Huh? I don't know. I live a quiet, contemplative life. Me, I didn't even try to find out. Don't you understand? You know, when you're wearing this badge of the law, when somebody does something against the law, then you're supposed to do something about it. But me, I done nothing. That's what's eaten. Well, what kind of prescription you got for that, Doc? How can you cure a sheriff who knows he should have made some arrests but didn't? Don't know what the prescription for that is, Tim. But one thing, don't quit as sheriff. Stick with it. Maybe you'll find the prescription for yourself. Maybe McCready will find it for you. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, it's quite a pretty place, Adobe Flint. Quite a pretty what? There he is now. See? Jeep just moving off now. Yeah. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> yeah, we'll catch up to him in a minute. Boy, Smith's got a brain. You gotta give him that. He's got a brain. I wish I hadn't come. Huh? I wish he hadn't made me come with you. I don't like this. A man might get killed Baby he's boy, just... that's what Coley's gonna try to do. Now you heard it all. I try to force him off the road, get him over the cliff round by Seven Mile Bay. Coley, let's go back. We go on, boy. Please, it's not right. It's, it's just... We're going to protect ourselves, see? Protect ourselves at all costs, Smith said. Now you sit tight, baby boy. Here we go. Well, 
right, isn't it? Moves over straight away. Hold on, Pete. <laughs> Boy, did you see that? Then he turned him over there. Coley! Please, Coley! Shut up, you yellow pattern and rat! <laughs> Move over, Road Hunt! <laughs> and before we get to Seven Mile Bend, he goes over the side of the hill, see? He just swings off the high road, slides down the hill, goes onto the low road, and goes merrily on his way. Yeah, neat, that. Didn't think he'd get that idea. Never would have thought of it myself. So we don't get him. Why, you crazy... Ah, uh, well, I guess maybe it couldn't be helped. Okay. And the kid here, boy, he was almost whimpering. He was so scared. Don't do it, Coley. Let's go back, Coley. Ah. Well, I don't like killing. Not that sort of killing. I just don't... Oh. Well, what is it? Look, can you see? Coming along the road now. McCready. Coming straight along here to the hotel. Well, I'm not staying here to face him. You can if you want to, but I never want to face him again. And by the look on his face, if I were you, I'd get out of here quick smart too. And so the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's Caltech's play, Bad Day at Blackrock. Anywhere you care to travel, motorists agree. The Caltech stand stands for better service. Drive right in and see. Caltex Butane Boosted is the gasoline made to take better care of your car's performance. Caltex Butane Boosted gasolines give faster starting, smoother acceleration, and more economical running. Next time you fill up, change to Caltex. See if you don't feel the difference. See if your car doesn't respond more readily, tick over more smoothly and steadily. The gasolines designed for today's faster pace, Caltex Butane Boosted gasolines. The Caltex Theatre now presents Joe McCormick in... Bad Day at Black Rock, Act Two. Stay where you are, Pete. I, Stay I'm... there. Yes, Mr. Smith. You ready for him, Coley? Oh, yes, I'm ready for him. Well, well, well. It isn't McCready, the world's champion road hog. Yeah, it's a small world, isn't it? It's such an unfriendly one. Now, why did you want to crowd me off in the road? I'm sorry if I incurred your displeasure. My car outside the front all mashed in. Anything at all I can do to make up for the damage caused to your you car. You ought to be more only... careful, man. All that one arm driving. I'll be driving. glad to pay for the damage. It's a threat to life and limb. Yeah, but fortunately, no one was hurt. Now, you could get yourself killed that way, nosing all over the countryside. Yeah. I guess I was lucky not to have been killed. We... Yeah. Anyhow, you won't have to worry about my welfare anymore. Hey, boy. Uh, you still expecting that convention? What? If you're expecting any extra cowboys, my room is available as from now. Are you checking out? That's right, yeah. L uh, any trains through here tonight? Uh, well, it's... Uh, Mr. Smith, would you know of any through here tonight? Well, the streamliner tomorrow morning will be the first train through here. Let's see. Uh, how about a bus? Uh, could I get a bus out of here? Closest stop is Sand City, 32 miles away. You're in such a hurry, you should never have got off here. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you. Excuse me, I'll go pack my things. Well, you... Coley. Huh? Not yet, not just yet. There'll be a better time than this. A much better. If you're looking what? for the keys to that Jeep, Mr. McCready, they're not there in the ignition switch, as you can no doubt see. Anything else I can do for you? 
Where would you suggest I look for the keys? The Jeep's not for rent. Well, it was just a few hours ago. Things change in this garage. They sure do. And Smith is the guy who changed them, isn't he? I don't know what you mean. What's wrong with this town of yours, Miss Worth? There's nothing wrong with this town, Mr. McCready. Nothing that concerns you, anyway. Why is everybody so concerned about me, then? What did your brother do here? What's he so afraid of? What do you care? What do you care about Black Rock? I don't care anything about Black Rock. Well, it just seems to me that there aren't many towns like this in America. Oh, but one town like it is enough. And because I think something kind of bad happened here, Miss Worth... I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I know this much. The rule of law is left here, and the, and the gorillas have taken over. Oh. And don't try to steal that key, Mr. McCready. It isn't the key to the Jeep. This is the key. The one I have in my hot little hand. And you aren't getting in. Sorry, but I have to leave you now. You can stay here at the garage if you want, till you work out what you want to do with yourself. See you, Mr. McCready. Miss Worth running away from you, McCready? Must seem like it to any casual observer such as yourself. Yeah. McCready, I'd like to ask you a few questions while you're around. Yeah, well, as you can see, I'm around all right. I, I guess uh, probably you've heard that Miss Worth is no longer in the car rental business. Good. I wouldn't want to see that gal getting any trouble. Wouldn't you? Well, what with rental permits and gas rationing, you know what I mean. Yes, I know, yeah. I certainly admire your sturdy sense of responsibility. Well, it's just that that gal has a future. Yeah, well, instead, would you let's talk about my future? You think you have the time? I don't seem to be going anywhere. I hear you handle a Jeep real well. Yes, I, yeah, I do have a way with Jeeps. I, I, it's a certain familiarity. Hmm, I think I understand. You're an army man, aren't you? Where was your arm knocked out of action? Italy. That's tough. Yep. I tried to enlist myself the day after them rats bombed Pearl Harbor. What stopped you? Physical, they wouldn't take me. Morning after Pearl, I was the first man in line of Marine recruiting at Sand City. They wouldn't take me. That's tough. What do you do in Los Angeles, Mr. McCready? I'm retired. You're a pretty young man to be retired. Well, aren't you might you? Uh, say I was forced into retirement. Yeah. You know? What were you looking for in Dobie Flat? Well, like I told you, I was looking for a fella named Kamako, but. Like you told me, he wasn't there. Oh, oh, oh. What's so? Uh, what's funny? <laughs> Nothing. Just that I don't believe you. Well, that's too bad. I believe a man's as big as what he's seeking. I believe you're a big man, Mr. McCready. Flatteries won't get you anywhere. Why would a man like you be looking for a lousy Jap farmer? Oh, you never can tell, you know. Maybe I'm, I'm not so big. Oh, yes, you are. I believe a man's as big as what'll make him mad. Nobody around here seems big enough to get you mad. What makes you mad, Mr. Smith? Me? Nothing. Nothing? You're a pretty big man yourself, Mr. Smith. The Japanese make you mad, don't they? Well, that's different after that sneak attack on Pearl Harbor and Baton. Did uh, Kamako make you mad? Well, it's the same thing. Loyal Japanese-Americans. Boy, that's a laugh. They're all mad dogs. Now, what about Corregidor, the death watch? What did Kamako have to do with Corregidor? Well, he was a Jap, wasn't he? Look, Mr. McCready, there's a law in this county against shooting dogs, but when I see a mad dog, I don't wait for him to bite me. Oh, no, no, I guess. You know, Mr. McCready, I swear you're beginning to make me mad. What happened to Kamako? He went away. <laughs> like I told you, shortly after he left, some... Uh, some kids went out there to Dobie Flat, and they got to fooling around, burned his place down. <laughs> you know how kids are. Look, you see these wildflowers? I brought a handful back with me from Adobe Flat. They're pretty, huh? There's something buried up there. Wildflowers like this, that means a grave. I suppose you knew that. When wildflowers grow like this, uh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I, I do. I saw a lot of it overseas. Anyway, I figured the grave at Adobe Flat wasn't a human grave because it wasn't marked. Kind of a mystery, that, isn't it? Kind of. Maybe you can figure it out. Yeah, maybe. I can. 
Well, why don't you give it a whirl? Might help you pass what remaining time you have here. No, I've got other things to do. Matter of fact, I'm not interested. Huh? No, not interested. Well, I'll be on my way now, I think, McCready. At least that's my story to you, Buster. <laughs> Sure. Come right along in. Thanks. You know, I thought to myself, I want to use a phone. Then I thought, who will let me use the phone? I came up with the answer. Doc Veely. Seemed like he wasn't quite as worried about me as the others. There it is. Help yourself. Thanks. It's 424. For, uh, what? Well, if I got you pegged, and I think I have, you're about to call the state police. But if I was you, and I'm surely glad I'm not, I'd look it up for myself. I wouldn't trust anybody around here, including me. <laughs> I'll take a chance of you, Doc. Yeah. 424, four, please. Uh, uh, 424? Four, yeah. Uh, the lines are all busy. What? All the lines busy, huh? Yeah. Well, they'll be busy all day for you, my friend. You see, we got a funny phone system here. Everything goes through the switch at the hotel. Pete also acts as the town's operator. Pete's sick. You mind not looking at me like that? Like what? Like I'm a potential customer. <laughs> Everybody is. I get him coming and going. You know, McCready, they're going to kill you with no hard feelings. You going to sit there and let them do it? No need to get waspish with me, mister. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it. Yeah, well, I feel for you. But I'm consumed with apathy. Why should I mix in? Oh, I don't know. I, maybe to save a life? I got enough trouble saving my own. Look, I try to live right. I drink my milk every day, but mostly I try to mind my own business, which is something I'd advise you to do. Oh, it's a little too late for that. Oh, no. You can still get out of town, but you'd better get out like a whisper. How? Well, I got a sort of limousine that you could have. Oh. Snake stuck. Where is it? Out back. Come on, I'll take you out there. Can you see what's wrong with it yet? No, nope. seems to be doing everything it should here at the motor. Yeah, but it isn't. It isn't starting. Of course, she is pretty old. Yeah. Everything old does get a bit cantankerous every now and then. Oh, Having great. trouble with what? the limousine, Doc? Nothing you can fix, Coley. Just leave it to us. Well, I was listening to your efforts to get it started. Now, I know a lot about cars. It's uh, probably the wiring. Probably. Maybe it uh, could be fixed. Easy. Except maybe if this wire was uh, busted or something. Coley, do the nice little things in life, will you? Huh? Like keeping your big fat nose out of my business? Well, now, look here. Uh, oh. <coughs> oh. Oh, now, wasn't that silly of me? I just don't know my own strength. That's the trouble. Well, fancy pulling that wire and clean out with that little tug. Afraid you haven't got a chance of getting it going now. <laughs> yeah, and wasn't that just the silliest thing for me to do? Sorry. You gotta admit I tried. For that, I thank you. How much time uh, do you think I've got before they... Well, you got at least till dark. They'll be afraid to see each other's faces. Well, thanks, Doc. I can't say that's been charming. Where are you going? Well, I, I don't know, but I'm going on foot. That's no good. You stray ten yards off the main street and you'll be stone cold dead. Maybe, but... Maybe, but what? Ooh, just maybe, but... See you later, Doc. Like a lemonade? I've got plenty. Help yourself. No, thank you. Would you give me a telegram form? I want to send a wire. Oh, are you sure? Thanks. Don't you, don't you like lemonade? Never thought much about it. There. There you are. Send that. Uh, please phone me re-urgent and dangerous situation at... 
You know to find the state police? That's right. Uh, look, you sure you won't have some lemonade? You don't have the muzzle velocity or some other drinks drunk around here, but it's it's good for what ails you. What ails you, Mr. Hastings? Me? Why are you so upset about this wire? Oh, oh me? Upset? Yeah, I, you. No, I'm not upset. I, I try to be a good neighbor, Mr. No, McCready. No, to, to Smith, you are, but what about the Camargo? I, I never seen Camargo in my life, honest. All right, then. You send that wire. Give me the answer when it comes, won't you? Yes. yes. All right, then, Mr. Hastings. Step on it. Boy, I'm hungry. Who's someone who'll give me a meal around here? I guess you could get a meal at Sam's place down the road. Sam's place, right. No. Well, you still here? I thought you didn't like this place. You mean going to or coming from? Staying put. No comment. No comment, he says. No comment and all the time he's sitting in my chair. My special chair. Did you know that, mister? In this hotel, this is my special chair. No one else ever sits on it. I was afraid of it. I'd advise you to give Coley his chair, Mr. McCready. Uh, you're here too, Mr. Smith. This is quite a party. Uh-huh. All right, then, Coley. Suppose you tell me where to sit. You tempt me to do just that. Well, Smith, your friend's a very argumentative fellow. Sort of unpredictable, too. He's got a temper like a rattlesnake. That's me all over. I'm half horse, half alligator. You mess with me, mister, and I'll kick a lung out of you. What do you think of that? No comment. You no know, talking to you is like like pulling teeth. You wear me out. You're a yellow-bellied Jap lover. Am I right or wrong? You're not only wrong, you're wrong at the top of your voice. Couldn't I pick a fight with you if I tied one hand behind me? If I tied both hands? Couldn't I? I... Judo, huh? So that's the way you fight, judo. Yeah, I might have known that's how a dirty chap lover would fight. Look, I don't like any sort of fighting, Coley, but it seems I'm forced into protecting myself. Chap lover! I can make you sick and sore if you want to keep on with this. You coming back for more? Am I what? <laughs> yeah! Uh, yeah. Uh, Pete, go get the doc. Somebody's going to be hurt here. Yeah, okay. Now, the next one is going to hurt even more, Coley, and the next one more than that, and so on. I'll kill you! No, you dirty... won't! But you're never going to get close enough, Coley. Anybody dies here today, it's going to be you. I'm giving you a chance. You force me to go all the way. It just needs my hand to hit in a certain way, and you, you'll you never wake up again. So help me, I'll kill you! Ah! 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 Now, you still want more, Coley. He doesn't want more. Are you, Smith? You've been standing here watching all this time. All right, how about you now? You're still in trouble, McCready. Oh, no, no, you're in trouble. Whatever happens, you're sunk. You got things a bit twisted. You killed Camargo, and sooner or later you'll go up for it. No, not because you killed him, because I think in a little town like this you can get away with it. But you're going to go up because you didn't have enough guts to do it alone. You put your trust in guys like this Coley slob and Pete. Pete, oh, not the most dependable of God's creatures. You know, one of these, one of these days they're going to catch on that you've been playing them for saps. And what are you going to do, huh? Peel them off one by one? Huh? Well, in the meantime, one of them's going to crack. When they do, you go down, but hard. Because they've got something on you, Smith. Something to use when the going gets tough. And it's getting tougher every minute. Anyway. Oh, Doc. Man, oh, man. Okay, Coley, I guess I'll ease your aches and pains for you. Great ape. Uh, Mr. Smith, I've been trying to think what to do. But I... Here, read it. The wire you wanted me to send. McCready. Please phone me, Reed. May I? Where's the answer to this? You expect an answer to a wire that was never sent? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, I just had a thought. Thought that is dazzling in its purity. You gave my message to Smith, didn't you, Hastings? Why, you little wart, that's a federal offense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the doc is so right. You know, like I say, Smith, it's getting tougher and tougher. Oh, I see we have our sheriff with us now, too. When did you sneak in, Sheriff? Just after Doc got here. Now, you better come in the picture and do your duty, huh? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, seems like. 
He's right, Mr. Smith. You're not supposed Don't to... Don't be a fool, Tim. Divulging information. There's a law that says Tim, you Tim, you're pathetic. Shut up. Okay, so maybe I'm pathetic, but I'm still sheriff. That's the point. You're not sheriff anymore. What? Your badge. <laughs> here, Pete. You come over here and put this on. You're sheriff now. Oh, but... Mr. Smith... Put it on! What? Yeah, okay. I'll take this. What? Well, now there's no evidence, right? No evidence, no case, and you didn't see a thing, now did you, Sheriff? Uh, no, not a thing. <laughs> well, get on your feet, Coley, and come on, boys. We spent enough time here for the moment. I... Aren't you going with your big boss, Pete? I can't wear this star, not when he's... Oh, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I should be more... Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I know what your trouble is, sonny. You'd like me to die quickly, wouldn't you, without wasting too much of your time? <laughs> well, you'll need drinks now. You'll need a, a lot of that to wash out your guts. <laughs> now, look... Why'd you come here, Mr. McCready? Now, will you tell me, please? I'll go crazy if I... Now, please, will you tell me? Sure. Sure, I'll tell you now. I came here to find Kamako. See, Kamako had a son. Son? I never know that. No one around here has ever heard of him There's having a, a son. There's a boy named Joe. Now, Joe is dead now. He's buried in Italy. Joe Kamako died saving my life. He was awarded a medal for that. That's this medal. You see it? It's, it's an important medal, this one. But I came here to give it to his old man. And that's all? Yeah, that was all I had in mind to do when I got off the train. But now... Pete, I think you got a story to tell McCready now. Well, okay, then I'll tell it. Smith owned Adobe Flat. He leased it to Kamako. He figured Kamako cheated him because you got to have water to raise anything and there was never any water on Adobe Flat. But Kamako dug a well. He must have gone down 60 feet. He got plenty of water. Uh, yeah, and, and that made Smith sore. He, uh, well, he got to hate old Japs. Day after Pearl Harbor, Smith tried to enlist him. Yeah, I heard him. about that. Oh, well, when he came back here, he was as sore as hell. He started drinking with Coley Hastings and me. We drank all day, got drunk. Patriotic drunk. Hmm. We wanted to go out and scare up the Jap a bit, have some fun. But when we got out there, Kamako heard us coming and he locked the door. Then Smith started a fire and, and the Jap, he come running out. His clothes were all burning. And then... Smith shot him. Well, I, I didn't even know he had a gun. Then you got scared and buried him and kept your mouth shut. Well, yeah. I see. Well, you go ahead and drink that whole bottle, boy, because you're going to need it now. McCready? Huh? What are you doing sitting out here, waiting for the bullet? Oh, uh, I was trying to work out what to do next, Miss Worth. I'll tell you. Get in. What? I'll get you out of town. Well, now, what are we here? Hurry up before anyone comes along. Okay. What made you change your mind about helping me? When you left the hotel after Doc and Peter told you everything, he grinded me. He explained everything to me. I said I had to help you get out. I'm helping you. Well, well. <laughs> if we'd only realized before... It... Yeah. Oh, hang on to that bottle, will hmm? you? Don't let it roll around. It's spare gas. Only thing I could find in my hurry to get to you and get you on your way out of time. No, I got it. It was a sad business, the Kamako affair. You don't know just how sad yet. And some people in this town are going to be just so sad about it.
What's the matter? What, what are we stopping here for? I, uh, I got to put some water in the radiator. All right, Smitty. All right. What? Ah! You lousy little trickster. Stop firing until I get there with you, Smitty. Stop. Ah! Ah! All right now, McCready. Your turn next. Come out from behind the jeep. I'm a witness of the fact you shot her down, Smith. Yeah, I know. That's why she was shot down, so she wouldn't be a witness to my shooting you. The only one who's going to be alive around this part tonight is me. Come on out, McCready. I know you haven't got a gun. So come on out. We'll get it over with quickly, huh? A bottle of gas. A bottle of gas. <laughs> All right, then, McCready. I'll come down and get you. Smith! Smith, have you ever heard of a Molotov cocktail? Yeah, I got no time to play games. No, I'm McCready. not playing games, boy. No, I'm not playing. You, you know what a Molotov cocktail is? We're using the war, you know. It's a, a bottle of gasoline, a wick in it. You light the wick and throw it and zoom! That's a potent weapon, man. And I'll tell you, I just made myself one in case you'd like to know. Would you like to come closer and sample it? You don't scare me, McCready. You're a praying man. You start them up. This is a praying time for you. <laughs> I've just lit the wick, Smith. Now you come any further, then you're gonna get it. Come out of there. I'm sorry for you, but it's gotta be this way. What's all the excitement about here, mister? Police and all these guys being put in the guard's van? Oh, there's been a bit of trouble here today. A woman shot, a guy burned to death, things like that. Gee, I thought it must have been something pretty important. You know, this is the first time the streamliner stopped here in four years? Second. So ends our Caltech's play, Bad Day at Black Rock. In a moment, we will give you tonight's cast and tell you about next week's presentation in the Caltech's theatre. Ladies and gentlemen, the producer of tonight's Caltech's play, Cressick Jenkinson. Thank you. Bad Day at Black Rock was presented tonight by courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Proprietary Limited and adapted for radio by John Crane. In the starring role you heard... I was John J. McCready. This was Joe McCormick. <laughs> In the supporting cast, the part of Coley was played by Ken Wayne, Doc by Wayne Polson, Pete by Louis Fyander, Tim by Owen Weingott, Hastings by Ozzie Wenburn, Liz by Elaine Montgomery, and in the role of Reno Smith, you heard Harp Maguire. Thank you, Mr. Jenkinson. Next week in the Caltech's Theatre, you will hear a play titled England Expects. The title being taken from Nelson's immortal signal at Trafalgar, and aptly enough too, for this is a story of Horatio Viscount Nelson and of his great love for Emma, Lady Hamilton. But it's a story with an entirely new treatment and told with a new approach. It lends a fresh poignancy to this tragic tale of the days when Britain was indeed a tight little isle, when all that stood between her and the mighty forces of aggression was the Royal Navy and one of the greatest seamen of all time. Now this is your compere Rick Hutton bidding you good night on behalf of your hosts Caltex Oil, 
marketers of Caltex Super Gasoline and Caltex Gasoline, the world-famous RPM 1030 Special Motor Oil and Marfac Lubrication.